Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. For today's video, I'm going to be sharing my final thoughts and overview on my Esthetician Aveda program. So I'm just going to jump right into today's video. If you have not seen part one, I will have it on a little cue card. That way you can click on it and see part one before seeing part two. So where I left off was telling you guys about how I was just about to transition into phase two of the Esthetician program at Aveda. So starting off with, I was a bit nervous for the transition of phase two because pretty much in phase two, you're going to be working with clients from the outside world. They are going to know that you are a student that is performing a facial, a wax or nails, whatever you may be doing on that client. They're going to know that you're a student, so they're not going to be tough on you. They also have to sign like a form that protects you as a student in case something um, bad were to happen. Nothing will happen to you um, because that person and sign that form so if you guys are a bit nervous for that there's really nothing to be nervous about um once you actually get to phase two you'll see what i mean and you'll kind of get comfortable because most of the clients that came to the institute has been coming to the institute for years so they were like dedicated clients and they were always excited to see like the new esthetician girls or like the new hair girls or whatever course you may be in. The clients were always excited to know that you were a new student. Um, don't get me wrong, there were some clients that were like, oh, where's this girl, where's this girl? Because I had a lady that apparently was like a horrible client and I'll get to that towards the end and tell you how I dealt with that situation and uh, how it made me feel. But anyway, so transitioning into phase two um, was kind of different because you would have to get there probably 10, 15 minutes before class, class actually started. Reason being is you want to get to that class 15 to 10 minutes before and you want to check the computer. I don't know if every school has a computer with a uh, booking site on it, but we did and we would have to come in and check that booking site and see what our task was or to see if we had any clients. What I mean by when I say task is two people, two to three people would be in the dispensary room dispensing products for anybody that was performing a service. That way um, we wouldn't have to get up and leave to go dispense our own products. Uh, our teacher would come in the room and we would tell her like we're doing oily protocol on this client and she would tell the person in dispense like Ashley needs the oily protocol and that person would bring it to me. Not only that, the person that was working in dispense always had to set up like 10-15 minutes be before class started that way we can get like ice machine working and just have everything in order because as soon as nine o'clock hit we would have a client at like 9 15 and you would have to start right away you don't want to be late because technically this is your job even though you're not getting paid for it you do get tips um, every now and then I wouldn't depend on your tips but you do get tips so it's your job that you don't have um, your client waiting long and whatever the case may be so if you were on dispense you would set up and you would dispense for your classmates the other job was the hallway job so you would pretty much uh, just be in the hallway that was the most boringest job ever you would have to wipe down like the door because it had a glass so no fingerprints were on it you would just sit in the dark hallway um, on your iPad and you would have to wait until you saw one of the lights come on in the room signaling that that person needed the teacher's attention to make sure that they could perform the service on them and that was a pretty tedious job that I remember nobody really liked doing and I can tell you that I did not like doing that because in the beginning I was always hallway so um, that's pretty much like the ta the two tasks that you would be assigned if you weren't with a client. Okay, so the problem with my class was we were a huge class and there was only like a couple of rooms for services. So that means everybody is not doing services. So you're probably wondering like, what do you do then? So back then, um, when it was phase two, we had a workbook that needed to be completed before graduation. And it was a huge ass workbook. I don't even think I have it anymore. I don't even remember if I got it back, whatever the case may be. But it was a huge workbook and most of the time everybody would be um, in the classroom if they didn't have a client just working on their workbook all day, um, kind of just listening to music, doing their own thing until it was lunchtime and then they would swap out, meaning we would go to lunch, we would come back and we would check the computer and see what jobs changed, who has clients now and stuff like that. 
Um, the other thing you would be doing if you didn't have any services is working on each other because like I said in part one, you do have a chart that you have to fill out and you have to complete before graduations with a certain amount of like makeup applications, waxing applications, facials, and so forth. So we would constantly be getting facials every other day that we were at school because our class was so big that there was never a time that we were all working because we couldn't all be working. Um, you guys that have like six people in your class you guys have an advantage because you're constantly with clients so that's pretty much how um phase two started off started off for me i did not really get a lot of clients in the beginning um i had a couple girlfriends that were the same we were always together we were never really with a client which sucked because we were so bored we were at school from nine to six and we would just constantly be doing a workbook or in the hall or something so it was kind of like boring in the beginning and it was dreadful i can't lie um it was some days that it was just like you don't want to be there because you know you're not going to be doing anything which sucks because you're wasting a lot of time just sitting there when you could be like out in the field actually like working and getting paid for what you're doing but that was how a lot of us girls felt in the um, esthetician program we felt as if a lot of time was wasted because of our class being so big and we felt like it was unfair that um we were such a big class and they knew what they were doing like they could have made the class small so that it was fair to everybody so that was kind of like a little problem so um moving on to when i started to actually take clients um it was probably like a month in that i actually had constant clients like back to backs and people rebooking with me and it was a breeze because you're in the room with the client by yourself so let's say i'm performing a facial i had this older lady um it was her first ever facial you sit down, you talk to them about their skin type, you ask them questions, any allergics, and are they allergic to anything, and you pretty much explain to them what you're going to be doing. They lay on the table, and get this, for the most part, a lot of the clients fall asleep, and you're doing like the facial, and you wake them up, and they're like, oh my god, it's over already? Like, they're so shocked that like they actually were so relaxed, and you made them fall asleep, and there's nothing to be nervous about, because you have your iPad right there, and a little tip is if you guys um, all get iPads at the Institute, connect it to your iMessage. That way, if you need like ice or you need like SPF, you can type to your friend real quick, hey, I'm in room, blah, blah, blah. Can you bring me SPF? Um, I forgot to grab it. And they'll walk in quietly and the guests won't even know. So the client portion is super simple. I personally hated doing like nails and stuff like that because that was not my specialty and we used to have males that would come in for pedicures and all of that stuff and it was just gross i'm just being 100 percent honest like i did not like that um another thing that happened to me in phase two which sucked was my teacher never gave me makeup clients at all and uh a lot a lot of the times we didn't get makeup clients but when we did it was like I didn't get any makeup clients and then uh, I had another friend she's like an actual makeup artist and she didn't get makeup clients so many people that could do makeup did not get makeup clients which we all thought was unfair because our teacher was pretty much giving the makeup clients to the girls that like didn't really know how to do makeup that way they can like um experience like hands-on working with someone but at the same time it was like okay how am i gonna get my makeup like uh chart filled out for graduation so it was kind of like mm, it was kind of like shady i feel like but it doesn't really matter because i'm just being 100 100 percent honest aveda's makeup is shit it doesn't have any type of pigmentation to it i don't like their makeup at all um i know a lot of girls had hits and miss like this one girl she would wear their products and it would look beautiful on her skin and then like we would put it on or i would put it on and i'll be like ew this looks nasty like i would want it off so that's like the situation um with makeup wise um yeah another thing that happened was when i became um like transitioned into phase two I had to like wear more makeup and look more professional, but I got so fed up with not having clients that I did not want to get done up and I didn't want to look like, like, I don't know, 
I don't know how to explain it. Like, I didn't want to look how I look today. I just wanted to kind of like, you know, put my hair up and wear no makeup or put a bun and just wear like a nice outfit. And it got to the point where my teacher was like, hey, can you do your makeup? And that kind of made me feel like some type of way. And I heard that she did it to other girls too, um, which we did laugh about like, oh my God, yeah, sure. Like, but I think that was kind of like, I don't know, kind of like unnecessary because most of the time we didn't really see clients and if we don't feel like like getting all done up then we don't have to you know obviously if this was like my actual job i would do my makeup every day and look like presentable but i didn't think i looked bad some days yeah i look tired i'm a freaking student what do you expect i'm gonna look tired but at least my outfit is like neat and ironed and my hair is at least up you know out of my face like it's supposed to be so that was another issue um that happened to me in phase two and happened to some other girls a lot of the girls in phase two felt stressed out um you could definitely tell that there was a lot of tension that happened because everyone was so like on their toes about everything that was happening um there was a little bit of drama in my phase two but you know that stuff went away it was never like anything huge or anything like that um what else so now i'm gonna talk about like my client that was horrible so apparently this lady has been coming to the institute for god knows how long and um i was new i had just transitioned into phase two i went up to get my client i called her name and she was like you're not so and so and i was like oh they graduated um we're the new class coming in and she was like well i hope you can reach the expectations of blah blah blah, blah. and i was like uh -huh, okay so then i brought her to the room and um when i brought her to the room i was like you can hang your purse up behind the door it has a little hook for you you can have a seat and you can put your feet in the little bowl to soak and she was like i don't my bag is too good for the hook or some some bullshit like that she said and i was like oh um she was like there's a basket that i put it in um i think she had a louis bag or a gucci bag she was like my bag is too expensive to be just hanging on the door and i was like oh, okay so i got her the basket i took everything out and i was like okay you can put it there so then I start to do my consultation form and ask her all these questions. Keep in mind, she's a new client to me. She may not be a new client to the Institute, but she's a new client to me. And she's like, I don't want to do that. I do that all the time. And I was like, um, I was like, I'm sorry, but you have to do it again with me because I'm a new client. I mean, I'm a new student and I don't have um, any past with you. So I need to know about your skin before I do something that can cause an irritation or something like that. And she threw this like huge fit or whatever, but then ended up doing it anyways. So then it comes time for her to get on the bed and the beds are pretty comfortable for the most part. And she was like, I need a pillow. I always get a pillow, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, oh my God, are you serious? So I get out the room and my teacher knew the client that I had because she had warned me like she's a harder like client, blah, blah, blah. I was like, okay, well, she needs a pillow. Where's the pillow? Can I have a pillow? So I had to rush out the room. Keep in mind, this is taking time out of her facial that she's not gonna get like her whole 60 minute facial or 90 minute facial. So I went and I got the pillow. I brought it back. I made it comfortable for her. And then she wanted like more and more like complicated things that is taking away from her facial. So then it gets time to bringing the dermoscope light over her. And I told her, I'm going to take a look at your skin. She was like, I don't need that. I'm like, sorry, but we have to do this every single time. So then it finally gets to the facial and I'm like doing the facial on her, whatever. And she's like talking to me, asking me like personal questions. I'm like answering them, whatever. And then I give her like her hand massage and everything. And I get done. I'm like, okay, you're all done. And she's like, that's it. And I was like, yes, ma'am, you had a 60 minute facial. It's blah, blah, blah time. We actually went over. Um, and she kind of like got upset or whatever. And then I was like, um, let me get your water and uh, get my teacher. So I got my teacher. And my teacher was like, oh, she really loved it. She loved your personality and all this stuff, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, okay, great. Like, people told me such bad things about her. And they're like, my teacher was like, yeah, she doesn't even tip the girls. So it comes to the end. I bring her her water. And I'm like, okay, I'm going to walk you to the front. It was nice meeting you. Hope to read book with you soon again, blah, blah, blah. And she was like, Ashley, you did such a great job. You, re you reached the expectations of whoever the other girl was. And I was like, okay, thanks. And I'm like walking away. And she's like, wait, I have something for you. And she actually tipped me, you guys. And I was like, she was 
I was so in shock because everybody was like, she's so mean. The front desk knew who she was and like she caused drama and all this and she doesn't tip people. And I was like, she's supposed to be like the horror client or whatever. And she was actually really nice towards the end of the thing. So I was like, you know what? You can't go in there um, thinking about what other people said about a certain person. You just have to go in there and be yourself because you never know the outcome of what it's going to be like with a client. And that's just a story that um, I wanted to share with you guys. But to pretty much finish off this video, I would say the Aveda Institute Esthetician Program was a decent program. I wish I would have looked into um, other schoolings, but to be honest, everything around me is so far for school. I already had to drive an hour to go to Aveda. So anything further was going to be like traveling to school, literally. So um, I would recommend looking into even like a... Uh, Colleges that you have around you, they may have a program because in Aveda, you learn everything organically, which there's nothing wrong with because I like learning about uh, good products for the skin, but you don't learn chemical peels. You don't learn microdermabrasion. You don't learn stuff like that. So if you wanted to actually um, do that, I would recommend just going to a college or a different institute. That way you can get the full experience of an esthetician and... Um, yeah, pretty much graduation. I didn't even attend graduation because I was so over Aveda. I did not go to graduation at all. I was like, um, you guys can send me my license in the mail and that would be great. It took me forever to get my license. Um, it took like two months. I know a couple girls, it took two, three months to get their license. So that was another stressful thing because I had some jobs lined up for me and I couldn't I couldn't work there because my license was taking too long so I didn't even get like a job in my field which was kind of annoying and then now I'm pregnant so it's like I'm not trying to work um I'm just trying to raise a healthy baby but um yeah that's pretty much my phase two experience in the Aveda esthetician program like I said look into other programs but if this is something that you're interested in or if this is a school that's nearby then definitely definitely ask all the questions before enrolling um if I forgot to touch on any subjects definitely leave me a comment down below and I will try my best to get back to you but yeah be sure to give me a thumbs up hit that subscribe button down below and turn on my post notifications that way you're notified every single time that I do upload a new video and I'll speak to you guys in my next one. Bye!